All right, chapter four, section three, dividing rational numbers. Remember, when you're dividing two numbers, two rational numbers, if they have the same sign, your answer is going to be positive. If they have different signs, it's going to be negative. So we're going to give you a quick review on what to do if you're dividing decimals and fractions. We'll start with the decimals, they're the easier one. Remember that the first number in the division problem is called the dividend. The second number is called the divisor. This is what you're dividing by. Now you cannot divide by decimals. That's what makes this tricky. Now I, I do have a positive divided by a negative, so I know my answer is going to be negative. I'm going to put the 2.5, that's the divisor, on the outside. I'm going to put the 16 on the inside. As I just mentioned, you can't divide by a number that has decimal. So I'm going to need to change this to a number that doesn't have a decimal by sliding the decimal point one place to the right, which is like multiplying it by 10. Well, I've changed the problem. I'm not dividing 16 by negative 2.5 if I change the uh, 2.5 to 25. I have to make a corresponding change. 16 is the same as 16 point. I'll add a zero for a placeholder and I'll move it one place. If I move this one, I move this one. If I move this two, I move this two. Here I just had to add a, a decimal point and some zeros, one zero in this case, to set this up. Now, you see where I moved it to? It comes straight up in the answer. 25 doesn't go into 1, doesn't go into 16, but will go into 160 six times. That's 150, subtract 10. And as you can see, I have something left over. Now, I'm trying to write my answer as a decimal. I don't want to try to write it as a mixed number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another placeholder, 0, right there. If I need to, I'll add another one and another one. But I think this is going to do it, because if I bring this 0 straight down here, 25 goes into 104 times. Nothing left over. I don't need to add any more zeros. There are no consequence now. My answer is 6.4. Remember, it was negative. Negative 6.4, or negative 6 and 4 tenths. Over here, I'm dividing a negative by a negative, so I know my answer is going to be positive. I'm going to put the 1.2 on the outside. I'm going to put the 8.4 on the inside. Remember, this is the divisor. This is the dividend. Our answer is the quotient. Now, I can't divide, I can divide into a decimal, I just can't divide by a decimal. So, this is going to have to go one spot, this is going to have to go one spot. So now I'm dividing 84 by 12. <coughs> Excuse me. 12 doesn't go into 8, but it will go into 84. A decimal point comes straight up. We'll go into 84 exactly 7 times. Now, since I have 0 left over, and I'm at the decimal point, and I don't need to carry this out any further. I'm done. My answer is positive 7. Negative divided by negative, remember, is positive. My last example here, I have a negative divided by a positive, which means it's going to be negative. The divisor is 3, goes on the outside. The 3.9 goes on the inside. Now, I don't bring my negatives into here to mess up my arithmetic. I keep track of that separate. Now, here I'm dividing into a decimal by a whole number. That's okay. You can divide by whole numbers. I don't have to move my decimal points any for this example. Just for these two because I was, my divisors were both decimals. This one's not. Decimal point comes straight up in my answer. 3 goes into 3 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract 0. Bring down the 9. 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Oh, these are coming out nice and neat. So my answer is negative 1.3 or negative 1 and 3 tenths. Now, it's a little different when you divide by fractions than when you divide by decimals, but this is a quick review. Hopefully, that'll help you out. When you divide by fractions, you have to remember something about reciprocals. The definition of reciprocal, fancy name is multiplicative inverse. Uh, reciprocals are two numbers whose product is one. When you multiply them together, it's one. You probably remember by making the numerator the denominator and the denominator the numerator, inverting it. So the reciprocal of two-thirds would be three-halves. The reciprocal of four, now four isn't written as a fraction, so it's hard to invert it unless you write four as a fraction by putting it over one. Now I can invert it and I get one-fourth. That's its reciprocal. The reciprocal of a negative is a negative, so if I take and flip this around, I get negative four-thirds. And this one over here is a mixed number. I have had students just have fits with mixed numbers before. Change it to an improper fraction first. This is negative. 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15 over 2. 
then invert it. This will become negative 2 fifteenths. That's the reciprocal. Now these are not the same numbers as you can see, but they are reciprocals. And if you multiply this times this, or this times this, or this times this, or this times this, you will get a product of 1. That's the definition. All right? So let's actually start multiplying some fractions here, or excuse me, some dividing some fractions here. So give me just a second. All right, now, what I was talking about with the reciprocals is better stated as the multiplicative inverse property. And it says for every number A over B, you can see like a fraction, where A and B do not equal zero, there is exactly one number B over A such that A over B times B over A is equal to one. This is a nice way of saying that every non-zero number has a, recip a reciprocal. Now it says here that a and b cannot equal zero because you can't have zero in the denominator and if you have zero in the numerator and flip it then it ends up in the denominator. Zero is the only number that does not have a reciprocal. All other numbers do. Now we use that when we divide fractions. To divide fractions by a non-zero number you multiply by the reciprocal of the number. Look down here. A over B divided by C over D is equal to A over B. That stays the same. I change the division and multiplication and I take the reciprocal of the divisor, the second number. Don't flip the first number around. Every once in a while I'll get a student that wants to do extra good, so I'm going to flip both numbers. Just flip the second one. Take the reciprocal of the divisor. And of course this means that B, C, and D can't be zero because you can't have zero in the denominator. Here are three examples. Now remember, keep track of your rules for signs at the same time. I want to write this as negative 12 over 1 times the reciprocal of the divisor, which is 5 over 2. And you say, well, no, you took the reciprocal here. No, I didn't. I just put it over 1 because it was an integer, and I wanted to write it as a fraction. This is the one that I took the reciprocal of. And I changed the division to multiplication. That's this rule. So now I'm going to multiply like I did in section 1. I can even help myself out a little bit by cross-canceling. Notice 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 12 6 times. I get negative 30 over 1, or better yet, negative 30 is my answer. Negative 30, negative times positive is negative, 30 over 1. 6 times 5 is the 30, 1 times 1 is the 1. And we're going to simplify. We're not going to put it, our answer as a, as a number over 1. It simplifies. Now here, I'm dividing. They're both positive, so my answer is positive. This first number here, notice, is a mixed number. I'm going to change it like I did the, the integer here. I'm going to change it to a fraction. Uh, 7 times 2, 14 plus 3. That's 17 sevenths divided by 1 half. That's 17 sevenths times 2 over 1. I um, divide by multiplying by the reciprocal, right here. Nothing cross cancels. I get 34 on top. I get 7 on the bottom. Remember, once we've changed it to multiplication, you multiply the numerators, you multiply the denominators, just like we did in section 1. Now, my answer is an improper fraction. I'm going to take one extra step. I'm going to divide 7 into uh, 34. It goes in 4 times with 6 left over. There's my answer, 4 and 6 sevenths. All right, one more to go here. I have negative 5 6 divided by negative 1 and 2 fifths. Now I have a negative divided by a negative, so that's going to be positive. I know that already. I'm going to write this as negative 5 6 divided by negative 7 fifths. Notice here, I change, just like I did here, I change the mixed number into an improper fraction. Now some students think, oh, I can cross cancel the fives here and here. Well, you can if it's a multiplication. You cannot if it's a division. And right now, it's still a division problem. I'm going to change it to multiplication, though. I'm going to leave this the same. And I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be negative 5 sevenths. Now, if there's any cross-canceling that takes, uh, can take place, I can do it now. But there isn't any. Nothing cross-cancels here. So uh, remember, negative times negative is positive. I multiply the numerators, I multiply the denominators here. I get 25 on top, I get 42 on the bottom. That's a proper fraction. It does not simplify. It's already in lowest terms. And that one is done. All right, let's try a few more here. Okay, this example said students ordered pizza for lunch. They ordered five eight-slice pizzas 
and each person ate two and a half slices. There was no pizza left over. How many students were there? Well, this sounds like a division because we want to know how many people, how many two and a half slices there are, because each person ate two and a half slices in all this pizza. Now they have five pizzas, and each one of the five pizzas has eight slices, so there are 40 slices. I have to multiply it first in this problem. It's a story problem, so be you know, very careful with reading it to understand what it's giving you here. Now I'm going to take the 40 slices, and I'm going to divide this by two and one half. That's how many slices each person ate, so that's going to represent how many people. So I'm going to figure this out when I divide how many people there are. This is how much one person ate. So this is 40 over 1 divided by 5 over 2. I rewrote both numbers to fractions, improper fractions. This is 40 over 1 times 2 fifths. Now I invert and I multiply. Invert and multiply is the way it was taught to me back many, many years ago by good old Mrs. Tarrant. Uh, Mrs. Tarrant, if you're watching the, the video, I thank you for all the help you gave me here with dividing fractions. Now I'm dividing here by um, 5 halves, so I'm multiplying by the reciprocal 2 fifths. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 48 times. A little cross-canceling here. I get 16 over 1 or 16 students. So there were 16 students that were eating pizza. Alright, next one up. I'm going to evaluate, here's where the algebra comes in, if x is 3 fifths. So I'm going to substitute 3 fifths in. Now remember, a fraction is division. Numerator divided by denominator. This is the same as 6 divided by x. So this is the same as 6 divided by 3 fifths, which is 6 over 1 times the reciprocal 5 thirds. Now I have two positive numbers. That's kind of nice. I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 twice, and it looks like I get 10 over 1, which is 10. Now over here, this is the opposite of x divided by 2. So the opposite of x, you can think of this as the opposite of x divided by 2. The opposite of x would be negative 3 fifths, and I'm going to divide by 2. This is negative 3 fifths times the reciprocal, remember 2, it's the same as 2 over 1, so this would be 1 half. Negative times positive is negative. Nothing cross cancels, so multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. Negative 3 tenths. Over here, this means the same as 4 divided by 7x. So you can see the 7 is times the x here. The 7 is times the x. So what I'm going to do here, since it's in the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around it to emphasize I'm going to multiply here first before I divide. So this is 4 divided by 7 times x. Remember, it's 3 fifths. 3 fifths. 7 is the same as 7 over 1 times 3 fifths. So this is 4 divided by 21 fifths. Now 4 is the same as 4 over 1, so this is 4 over 1 times the reciprocal, which is 5 over 21. I multiply the numerators and denominators, nothing cross cancels, and I get 20 21st. And that's my answer, it's already in lowest terms. Now if you've forgotten how to do some of this, it's going to take some time to get back on track. Watch the video as many times as necessary. You guys already know, there are other videos that you can watch. If uh, you want something to supplement the one that I've got here for you. But practice, practice, practice.